Hey folks, welcome back. It's just about coffee time, but before we get there, I need to tell you guys about something that I think is rather important, especially if you're diving in to the world of sawmilling. Now, what I'm sitting atop of, besides looking like a bit of a storage center, is my ATV with the cargo box and my trailer back there. Now, this is my typical setup for getting back and forth between my house, my shop, various spots in the bush, and my sawmill. Now, here's my sawmill behind me if you're brand new. If you're not brand new welcome back you've seen this plenty of times before but that's my sawmill that's my woodland mills hm 130 i've been cutting a lot of wood with that over the years and that is a thing of beauty this project you see above you well this is in the works i should probably stop talking and get down to work on it because snow's coming but regardless i'm going to take a break and tell you about this what i'm going to tell you about is the tools i keep at the sawmill now i do have that atv and it's got a lot of cargo space along with the trailer but let's face it Hauling tools back and forth between a shop, your house, and the sawmill gets pretty old. When I first got excited when I was buying that sawmill, I had a tool list a mile long, and I had a bunch of tools out here. And to be honest with you, see that toolbox or uh, tool bench over there? That used to be completely jam-packed with tools, and then I started to realize that it ended up just getting stored as opposed to used. And so I weaned down my tool list, and I weaned it down quite a lot. I actually weaned it down to what you see before you. These tools are the tools that I think, if you're starting out, are the tools you need. The tools you need to leave out wherever your sawmill is. So let's have a look and I'll tell you exactly why these are the tools that I use at my sawmill and why you might want to consider them for your sawmill. Now let's have a look down here and we'll talk about the crescent wrench first. This crescent wrench is probably going to be one of the most versatile tools you can own, especially at your sawmill. To be honest with you, this thing has driven nails. It's acted as a pry bar and Oh, I've probably thrown it out of frustration from time to time. I don't actually do that, but I'm sure one could throw it out of frustration. So this ends up being used in reality for adjusting blade tracking. On the back of that sawmill over there, when you put the blade on for the first time, it is probably not going to track true, and it's going to want to pop off. On the back of that sawmill, there's some adjustments you have to make. There's a bolt, for me anyways, that you have to adjust and that puts the blade back into adjustment or into uh, true tracking. This ends up being what I end up using because it's infinitely adjustable. And by infinite, I mean to one and one quarter of an inch. The next tool, this one right here, vice grips. Now, just like the Crescent wrench, this thing has some great versatility. This thing, you can pound nails with it. I'm sure you could, oh, you could probably pull nails with it. I'm sure you could, uh, Oh, I don't know, you could probably tie a string to that and hoof it up over a ridge beam. You can do a variety of things with this. What I do with this, aside from those things, is I use it to hold on to nuts when there's a bolt on the other end. You guys know the scenario. You're bent over in an awkward position and you're turning the bolt and nothing's happening. Nothing's coming loose. And then you look underneath and you see that the nuts attached to it and the nuts not staying put. Well, I end up using the vice grips to make sure that nut stays put. Is it the best tool? Well, probably not. You could probably get another crescent wrench. I don't happen to have one handy. Or you could get about 50 wrenches and hopefully one of them is the size you need. I just use the vice grips. Next, you guys have this guy. This is just a relatively inexpensive torque wrench. This is used to torque the blade on my sawmill. I have to get that to 25 foot pounds according to the manual. This is the guy that does it. Moving on down the line here. A little scared to sit on this board. I can't tell if it's wet. Oh yeah, she's wet. Never mind. Moving on down the line here. I've got this guy. I've got a little hatchet. Now this hatchet is used to cut off branches when they're sticking up from the log that I put on the mill. Now, although I like to say I'm half decent at limbing a, a, a log, from time to time I forget some, lo some limbs and they make their way to the sawmill bed and then they bump the sawmill head and I can't actually cut unless they're removed. That's where this guy comes in. Just give her a quick chop and it's gone. Same thing with this. This saw is not used for cutting logs. I used a chainsaw for that. I'm no, uh, I'm no lumberjack here. Well, I guess I'm sort of like a lumberjack, but I'm no, uh, I'm no uh, saw lumberjack. I'm a chainsaw lumberjack. I use this to cut limbs. I cut the limbs off when I forget to limb them with my chainsaw. I just pulled this out of my pocket because this is a late, uh, a sort of a late edition of the mix here. This is a bit of a multi-tool here. Obviously you can tell it, uh, it's got a variety of imperial and metric measurements on it. This is used in addition to this 
in addition to this. Okay, so that's sort of the uh, the trio right there. I can fit pretty much every size of bolt and nut um, with these uh, with these tools here. Moving on, I don't think I talked about this yet, and this is probably one of the most important tools. This is a basic tape. I don't need a 50 foot tape or a 25 foot tape. I just have a little guy here. This is a little 16 foot tape. What I use this for is to verify my cuts to make sure the measurements are cutting exactly what my scale is reading. This is a great tool. I keep it out of the sawmill. Now, unless you're cutting in a climate where say there's snow on the ground 24 or seven, this is something you're gonna need. This is a basic brush. This brush removes dust, debris, dirt from the log because I've had to skid it. I remove the debris once it gets up onto the sawmill bed so that I'm not running my precious blades through it. Nothing worse than running that blade through some dirt and seeing the sparks fly. That's where this comes in. And lastly, let's have a little look. So yeah, this guy here, this is my cant hook. I just talked about it. This thing has had some miles put on it. Now the miles have not been easy miles. And to be honest with you, this has broken three times. I'm not talking about the metal down there. Well, actually that did bend, but I'm talking about the handle. The handle snapped off three times and I'm no Hercules, but I put a bit of a hurting on the log the odd time when it won't move. And sure enough, that's caused it to break. I don't know what type of wood this is. Maybe you guys know what it is, but uh, it's certainly not very strong. After some quick repairs and some jimmy rigging, as you guys can tell, it's back in action. If you're going to forget one tool up at the shop or up at the house or in your work vehicle and not have it available, make sure it's not this guy. This thing is used every single time, unless it's a, you know, really, really small log that I can turn by hand, but it's used pretty much every single time to help me turn logs and just move them around the general sawmill. Well, guys, there you have it. Those are the tools that I use pretty much every single time I'm out here sawing wood. I have a huge selection of other tools, but to be honest with you, in my experience, the more tools you have out here, the more tools you're going to forget about and the more tools you're going to misplace or drop in the snow. And then when you actually need them, whether it's actually out here or up at the shop, you can't find them. So I leave most of my tools in my shop, in my toolboxes where they belong. The things I do leave out here are right there. Those things, very small, but very valuable and definitely keep me in business with my sawmill. Anyways, looking around here, I got a lot more work to do on my sawmill shack. And as I mentioned, we are getting closer and closer to November. What that means is I got to start hustling because the snow is probably just over the hill. Anyways, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. As I mentioned earlier, please check out the playlist for the sawmill shack build. This is called the Hillbilly Hideout version two. So check out that build in the playlist and hopefully it's done before long. Any questions at all down below? If you're new, welcome. And if you're not, see you guys next time.